Victoria 3 is a game all about colonization, so today why don't we stop that from happening as Sokoto. We are going to be playing as this nation, this plucky small tribe uh, that is sort of, sort of the biggest in this region. Uh, with a population of 5.4 million, a decent sized GDP of 3 million, which is better than... It's around the size, yeah, about the size of Sardinia Piedmont. And we're going to be trying to aggressively defend against the... Europeans. My aim here is to drive out as many of the Europeans as possible from Africa whilst adopting quite an aggressive expansionist stance, which usually isn't advised in Victoria 3, but I'm going to do it anyway. We start out with a GDP mostly consisting of uh, grain for the most part. A lot of grain, actually. Yeah, a huge amount of grain. And insufficient taxation capacity, particularly in East Hauserland, which I believe most of our population live in. So first things first, we are going to go ahead and from the society tab, grab international trade to try and get to the stock exchange and currency standards. But first, we will get taxation capacity and probably some urban planning. So considering we have quite the uh, agrarian-based economy, it's not really advisable for us to go straight for any sort of industry, really. We want to sort out our agriculture first. Uh, we do have a decent amount of grain and actually clothes, but not much furniture. Uh, and also not many logs. So we can go ahead and probably grab some logging camps. Uh, I kind of want to avoid building these house land for now just because of the sheer amount of people that live there. Otherwise, we're going to pursue an export-based economy. I think we probably have the ability to get a construction sector immediately. Uh, we do have the infrastructure. We just don't have the taxation capacity. So, so building there's not that bad, to be fair. I think also what we're going to do at the start is straight up try to conquer, for example, outer house land. We start off with 65 regulars. We have uh, quite the decent army. No one's leading one way or another, and so I think it is probably time for us to mobilize our troops. We don't actually have a general. Okay, let's get one general. Or well, probably two, to be fair. Defensive strategist, traditional commander. Let's get traditional commander. And I also want another one. I like how the idea of having three generals, because then we can actually fight on three different fronts. If I were to promote this guy, to the max level, um, then he could command 60 troops for sure, but that would be kind of bad. But Grammy and Wadai are supporting, which means we need some boys over in the east. Just gonna be sitting here trying to push on this front. Uh, we need another general, as much as we can't afford it bureaucratically. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the war goals to vassalize these two states that have dared to get involved, as well as some war operations. Like I said, not really a recommended thing to do in Victoria 3, declare war. It's usually bad for you, but we're doing it. We have an army and we're using it. Less to the meat. Yeah, imbue them with loyalty to stay. That sounds good. Right, we might lose a couple of times, but eventually we'll win. They're defending on this side. I'm going to try advancing on this side as well. There we go. We're pushing a little bit. Takes a while, but we can afford the losses. Oh, that reminds me. I should probably do a decree. Uh, encourage agriculture everywhere, as well as social mobility in these two states. Go, we push on a little bit further. One final time, perhaps. I do enjoy the fact that it's just two huts shooting at each other. But also, how pretty is that? I do enjoy it. Are we pushing it all over here? I don't think we are. I'm actually going to build another construction center because we can afford it. We're actually making uh, a lot of money. All right, we've enforced on that, which now means the boys need to help on this front. Build some logs up here. Try and get the people uh, active. It doesn't take us that long to incorporate this territory because they are our culture, which seems a little odd because um, Africa at this point, specifically this area in Africa, was an incredibly diverse region. Um, it still is to this day. So I don't know what it's on about. And the front seems to have split into three. Bagrimi has been overrun. We grab a little bit more taxation capacity. And I think urban planning is up next. Uh, I will also absolutely take some government administration. Like five in this area. The more we can build over there, the better. But we're going to need it where we're going. Uh, and we're going... I don't know where... We're not going anywhere, but, you, you know, uh, I guess metaphorically going. <laughs> the nation of, of Sokoto is very much staying still. All right, we vassalized Bagrimi, and now we need to advance on all fronts over here. My thinking is we can only defend the other Africans if they are part of us. So, Plus, this gives us access to Darfur and potentially Egypt, which would be a pretty insane sight. Right, we're starting to absolutely roll them. There we go. And they're our vassal now. And they're loyal. Wonderful. Uh, I can do a diplomatic play to, where are you, annex subject. But for now, I'm content with just taking their money. Also going to quickly go in against Bornu up here and just sort of try and rapidly expand our joint market to this lot. Basically, I'm going to try and create a bunch of goods that these guys will buy. Also, it saves us the bureaucracy. Oh, it looks like some people are getting involved. Who else is getting involved? Benin is going to get involved. Okay, well, in which case we'll add... Uh a uh, little thing to you as well. Seven battalions in reserve. We got 20. Okay. Defend this front. And we'll add some more operations as well. 
Now, academia, because we want to start getting our people understanding how things work, because our guys are struggling, uh, which is, I believe, the worst. <laughs> There's some war. Instantly, we march in on that. Let's see how we're doing on this front. Losing, but I'll change later. I feel like we make a lot more money at war. Right, late from editing here. Uh, unfortunately, the audio for this next part has kind of corrupted a little bit. So I'm going to give you a, a brief overview whilst you see it at speed 500%. Basically what's happened here is we push in quite easily to our neighbours, uh, we fulfil all our ambitions there. And then we have to sort of sit there and wait for the British to decide that they don't want to be there anymore. In the meantime, I very eloquently explain our future plans, and I was going to explain them here, but I think it's more fun to let you find out as we go. So yeah, winning the war, building up our industry, and now I'm about to look at the results from that in terms of our income from diplomatic pacts. Yeah, these diplomatic pacts aren't going to last. Oh, well, actually, my, I think they're all paying us like vassal taxes, so... I think we can only vassalize people that we're bordering. Okay, well, our bureaucracy is good enough that I, I'm tempted to go after Ashanti. Um, that's another 1.21 million people. And they do, I believe, if I check in here, they have logging camps and the potential for sulfur mines and dyes and stuff. What is a decent amount of barracks? The US demands that we submit to them to become their protectorate. Absolutely not, mate. I do want to see what happens if I try and annex one of my vassals. Yeah, so does it mean like... I can't annex them peacefully. I have to just, like, annex them, annex them. Because I don't want to annex them, annex them. Like, I just want to test this out. But I guess we're fighting the English again. Because them have like, them being a vassal state is infinitely more useful to me. Because I don't have to waste my bureaucracy. Oh, well. We just blitz them before the English turn up. We should be fine. All right. Just finish off the less, last of the Benin lot. We've unlocked democracy. That's nice. I'll start trying to unlock line infantry. I think that'll be quite useful. And we're in the same situation before with the uh, with the English. Oh, they're so quick to dogpile on, on each other. We're just missing clothes and furniture, really. Yeah, we just annex it. That sucks. It would cost me more money than uh, if they were my vassal. So let's not do that anymore. Okay, looks like the British are landing. Let's just chuck them out. There you go. <laughs> Gotten rid of them again. Ooh, oil could be here. Nice. I think my fellow vassal states. Oh, they've been bankrolled. France are bankrolling my vassal. Let's see how it is. Okay, we've got line infantry going, and then we'll probably go for... Production's not useful right now. Uh, I'd love to go for currency standards, because then I can get per capita taxation, which will make us a lot more money. Yeah, government's getting increasingly pissed off, because the landowners who make up most of the state kind of hard to, to displease right now. As in, I shouldn't displease them, not that it's difficult to. It's very easy to, to displease them, to be fair. Mechanical tools, we don't have the ability for that. Let's go for intensive agriculture. We build tools industries, though. I just really think getting our resource industry up is... Paramount. Because coal and iron, we can create steel with that. Come on, Britain. You don't want to be here anymore. What's this cost of war this time around? Yeah, look, 7.94 million. <laughs> you spent 8 million on this war. I've spent about a million, to be fair. On the, well, I haven't. My, my vassals have. I've spent about 70,000. How does this keep going up each time I see it? Because you have good gold reserves. All right, it's time to get another construction sector. I'd hate to be the city planner. Can we just tearing down something because it's expensive and then putting back another one the second I could afford it? Alright, let's go iron frame buildings. Shortage of iron and tools. We need iron and tools desperately. So let's go wooden buildings because we can't afford anything else. And let's start building up that iron industry. Really strong domestic iron industry. And that should help us immeasurably the next time we decide to dance with the Brits. There we go. Now, why did I want to take this? Well, first I did want to test about the whole annexation thing because I've never actually done that before. And secondly, I wanted a port to access the global market because then we can start sending our goods abroad. We also have 36 battalions in reserve, so we can go up to about 100. Not great, to, to be blunt. We have uh, an iron shortage. For example, I can import iron. You know, I have to like designate market interest and that sort of stuff. But for now, we need to just build a ton of iron. Now, the Brits do not like me. They are conciliatory towards me. They don't want to fight us anymore. So let's go ahead and improve relations. I feel like grain is still like the, the dominant. Yeah, grain makes, makes up most of our GDP. We actually have a deficit of grain. Grain, grain, furniture down here. So let's do a manufacturing degree. Oh, it's agriculture. Let's get rid of that. We want manufacturing. And our economy is actually really, really nicely balanced. It's a shame about all the uh, extremists, but that's fine. It's just because of the turmoil, which should hopefully go when this happens. All right, start getting a health system. Malaria around here is going to be a bit of a killer if we can't stop it. Yeah, iron is the big shortage. Unfortunately, I've got a load of iron mines who queued up, and you are now in a corporate state. Just stop being radicals, man. Industrial boom. Nice. Boost our industries further. Hell yeah. I could declare an interest in Senegal, I suppose. Let's do that. Do you have any iron mines? Uh, you got a lobbing camp. Ooh, rubber plantation. That could be useful. Sulfur mine. No iron. Okay. Anyone around here got an iron mine? Before you go on. Can I attack you? 
I don't think I can, because I'd have to set an interest over there. But hypothetically, do you have an iron mine? You've just got a bunch of, you've got 16 livestock ranches. Your entire population is just livestock ranches. Our GDP has gone up to the number 23 worldwide. GDP per capita is still not great. Uh, and people are kind of, well, they're impoverished, not struggling. You go to agrarianism. Is what I want to do, but it would piss off the landowners. I'm going to do it anyway. If I do this, I'd make money, but... I don't think... Can I import dyes? This would cost me for tools. Not the rural side of things. Soil enriched in farming. I don't... I can't afford fertilizer. I mean, there is just some tools, really. So let's get the tool industry going. And then we can start modernizing our uh, primary agriculture. Do you reckon we could take out the Dane? What's going on over here? England versus France. Which means they're embroiled right now, which means we could probably take a shanty. All right, let's push. I'm going to add a war gold coin to Ghana as well. Going to hurt our bureaucracy. Let's go ahead and prep for that by building some government buildings. That's establishing a colony. Lathe. Ooh, skyscraper. Uh, no, government administration. All of them in Hausa. All right, 36 battalions in reserve. Recruit general. In fact, I can't do that. I don't have the bureaucracy for it. Damn, that'd be expensive. Why is that? Because uh, we don't have any sort of arms industry. All right, well, no European powers joined this time, so that's nice. Looks like they have actual infantry, though. How do you have that many battalions? Oh my god, 467. Jesus. Yeah, I'm content just to sit here and kill all of his men. We're losing at the rate of 2 to 1, but we have a, like, double his population, so. There we go. And eventually we get into a battle where it's 20 to 10, and we can push through. Okay, we're not going to be able to do agrarianism this time around, it doesn't like. Get some charity hospitals going. Why not? Well, our bureaucracy's screaming at us to stop. I have an idea on how to win this war. Uh... We're gonna have a 75 um, percent malice to our attack, but that's fine. We just have to wait for a little bit. What are you doing in Senegal? Alex, no, you can't do that. Oh God, the US is, is over here. Right, we're gonna push him back here at least. All right, and that is that done. Okay, let's see what we've got here. So, poverty state, bad infrastructure. That's because it's an un unincorporated state. Uh, it's got some logging camps. That's nice. Uh, tobacco, cotton, coffee, lots of nice luxury goods we can sell. That's nice. No sort of urban uh, sort of center to speak of. It's fine. And the Americans are here. <laughs> oh, no. The French now border us. The Dutch are also here. What's your diplomacy like? Are you, are you allied to anyone? Plus a union with Luxembourg is an honor plus a union. Nice. Dominion. Dutchy Cindy's. Otherwise, you're there. Okay. Well, we body now. <gasps> dye plantations. We need dyes. Can we? We can get dyes, right? Yeah, I've got a load of dye plantations. But why don't we switch our production over to dye? That actually have a lot. So what I'm thinking is, we can upgrade our clothing industry, right? To, to having dye workshops, and then we just consume more dye. Do we have the ability to do that. We have loads of dyes. Yeah, pff, let's do that now. What am I doing? We need tools. And here we need glass. It's super hard trying to build your economy from like this without any sort of tech. We're at number 20 now. Oh no, the tunis is getting taken out by who? Is it by the French? Puppet Montenegro and Puppet Tripolitania. Well, they're trying to defend their buddy. Meanwhile, the UK has taken out Algeria. <laughs> I've never seen the colonial powers this aggressive in a game where I'm trying to defend against them. Lots of radicals. We still have dyes. Yeah, we're still not using a lot of them. Okay, cool. Uh, shortage of tools. That's fine. We have no... I need the domestic arms industry. Lovely. Now we have a healthcare system. We try doing this now. The landowners would hate me for it. But we need the taxation capacity, so I'm, I'm going to try and force it through. Oh my god. Yo. US, chill, dude. <laughs> we need arms. We need domestic arms industry. Arms industries. We need these. Okay, what's the inputs for this? Iron and hardwood. Well, we've got logging camps and we've got loads of iron, so I don't see why this wouldn't work. I'm going to give one a shot in East Houseland. And I'm going to implement censorship probably after this. Just to try and appease the landowners, because otherwise my legitimacy is going to collapse, and with it, my income. Okay. Uh, let's start making some tools, in fact, because we need it to, to get our industry up and running. So to improve our mines, we need tools. Currently, our mines aren't that profitable. They're kind of shaky. And that's because iron is at an all-time low, and tools are at an all-time high. If we're going to need more tools, then let's start building some tools. And maybe let's export some iron to someone. I don't think we can export anything to anyone. How are you involved in a... What? How? What? But you're a colonizable power. By the way, so those, I think must be an uprising or something. Great Britain's now taken out uh, north of me. Okay, that's not good. And Britain has taken the boys next to me here. 3.4% okay, chance, boys. Hey, he's got on 13. I'll take that. Yes, the iron mines aren't profitable because tools are super expensive. Do we produce tools anywhere? I don't think so. This, this might be the first place. This is going to have a tool workshop. Also going to violently suppress these areas. Increase mortality, but it removes a lot of the issues we're having. Okay. It's going to hurt our bureaucracy, but it appeals to our landowners, which we need to appease if we're going to actually get agrarianism to pass. Which will help our taxation capacity, which means we'll make more money. Because we're still, yeah, too many of you. Okay, so the tools, they use wood, which is a low. Tools are expensive, or used to be expensive. Unequal treaties. Not doing that. Got back down to 
3.4%. Why would I sign unequal treaties? Good luck, buddy. <laughs> You're surrounded by the French. God, so am I, technically. Okay, they should bring down the, the cost of tools quite significantly in our country. We should then, in turn, make the mines a bit more profitable. All right, that seems to be working. GDP has been stagnant for a little while as we try and figure this out. Ah, going down to zero again. We'll try again later. People really want colonial exploitation. We get colonialism, but the radical, but the rural folk absolutely despise it. Just tell me something that you like, okay? Rural folk, you're not helping me here. What do you want? What laws do you like? Consumption-based taxes. Everything that you want destroys me. So you know what we're going to do instead? Oh, I can't. I'll put you in government. <laughs> I'm going to reform the government. I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> You're out of government and I'm suppressing you. Okay, so what's our market looking like now? Uh, loads of fabric, hardly any grain. We need furniture and, and everything else. We've got tools. How's our iron and such? Decent amount of iron and wood. Loads of wood. Okay, let's try creating an arms industry. Can't export it to anyone, so it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Unless we plan a mobile. Like you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to create an arms industry. And then we're going to switch out our army to line infantry, which is going to cost a lot of money. But then we're going to use like the, uh, the government cash to equip the soldiers to pay the factory, which will then create jobs. <laughs> I prefer games where you just point and shoot. <laughs> right, we're going to radicalize everyone. Screw it. And we're going to go for probably colonial exploitation. And act freedom confidence. I can't. I'm, I'm already doing something else. Like, the only way to protect the Africans is to is from the European colonials is to become an African colonial nation. We know it to be true. Okay. The smallest little revolution possible. It looks like this city is fighting this road. It's an interesting uh, development. We'll see see how that develops. Keep an eye on it. And Prussia, it seems, has taken the took Tyrol. Okay. Age old question: Who should get Tyrol, Austria or Italy? No, the Prussians. All right, we need more government administrations for our institutions. We're not a terror. We're actually quite an educated populace. That's nice. Colonial enthusiasm. Take our rightful spit place in the world stage or load the ships for two years colony growth speed plus 50 percent yeah i'll take i'll take the lesson chance for that grab some realism ranked 35 now our gdp isn't bad it's comparable to the netherlands unlock railways despite the fact that we are nowhere near being able to use them jesus that jumped up there okay. loads of radicals that's fine gonna enact colonial expedition now all right exploitation excellent and now what we're gonna do is create police force a dedicated police force the landowners like it and that will help out it will radicalize the rural folk but no one cares about them so now what i can do with that is i can declare an interest uh you know like here and i can establish a colony okay everyone's in turmoil that's fine why are you in turmoil? Is it because I is it because I've declared several laws that you do not like? I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Yeah, we have a hideously ineffective bureaucracy right now. Conquer British South Cameroon. Oh no. Don't think you'd be able to do that one, Fang. Good luck though, bud. I want to get to these regions. Look at look at their GDP. That's like another million we can add onto our own. Reserve no police. I'm not doing that. It's just the rural folk. I've already been suppressing you for a while. Britain is is going south of me. Uh let's start establishing why can't we haven't why, why do we not have Queen Iron? Ruse all effects from from here. Yeah, we're a bit far off of that. Okay, well let's let's work on colonizing this area then. A little a little. Uh... Why can they do it? Does he know Queen Iron? Let's try colonizing. Oh, do we actually have that arms industry? Uh, shortage of hardwood. Okay, let's see what we can do about that. All right, change that production method. I don't want all of it to be hardwood. Maybe just a couple of them in this region. Logging camps, hardwood production. Okay, people are starting to. I think I just crashed my own economy. <laughs> okay, because tools are suddenly extremely expensive, so we need to. <laughs> Sort out our tools. Uh, and you don't have... Well, now you have hardwood, at least. Okay, we have no grain. That's fine. We don't need grain where we're going. Uh, we have guns. We need more tools. We're going to build some tools in Sokot, Niger. Yeah, you're angry. I understand you're angry. What's that doing? Technology is probably 10%. Fine. Why don't use technology? God damn. Okay, most people are getting beaten up over here. Oh, this is how colonialism works. Um, we establish a colony. It progresses each day. And then... I really like this, this feature. Watch this. And... Oh, oh, oh! Increase a little bit. I really like it. <laughs> it's very satisfying to watch. Oh, no. British are doing it up there. It creates some weird borders though, like this. Well, in this case, you can see that the Americans are taking out the Mexicans, but you understand my meaning. So I like that it's a bit more dynamic. All right, I'm gonna drop down our construction once more into the abyss. So how we do it, we build up our gold reserves and then we just build at a sustainable rate. It means our economy is not gonna, you know, shoot off into the sun anytime soon, but it's also not gonna burn like Icarus. No, oh, it's a good, it's, it's a good mythological reference. We always love to see it. How do we have 10,000 people here? <laughs> I suppose our growth rate is, is pretty high. We have the 18th most populous nation on earth. All right, we need more bureaucracy so we can start developing more colonialism. How do you keep doing this? I, I don't understand. They, but they're, they're an unincorporated state. How do you keep on doing that? So what I'm trying to say is that if it's if it's a colored in nation, you can play as them. They're a civilized nation. If they're not colored in, you are not you can't play as them. And you can't, like, look, let me show you. You can't target them with diplomatic plays because it's a decentralized nation. 
So I'm very confused how Britain is managing to target diplomat like unincorporated states because they don't have any troops. <laughs> it must be like some sort of uprising or something. And they just march in. Dude, these conscript troops actually have better. That means we can't colonize anymore until we research Queenine. To be fair, they have killed the British in a ratio of 20 to 1. So that's rather impressive. Oh, and they've been killed. They're calm about it. So that's nice. Hey, Britain. Sir, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Grain is still our main export in these two regions. What clothes is over here? It's just grain. Well, furniture up in northern Cameroon. It's weird considering we're objectively starving. All right, let's bump up our colonial growth as well as our education. And that's how you crash the game. It's a very unknown sequence uh, of events that you see there. You click one button, two button, you wish, and then the game crashes. Let's give it a go. Okay, it didn't crash this time. Pharmaceuticals has been uh, invented, so we could technically increase the mortality rate, but instead, I need quinines. Yeah, it's gonna take 35 months, but once we research that, it removes all effect, effects of uh, malaria in your own colonies and states. Does that mean it allows establishment of colonies and states with severe, severe malaria? So this lot will have severe malaria. Uh, and I think it removes it from here as well, so that gets rid of our mortality in non-homeland states. Well, these are all homeland states. Wait, no, they're not. They're split states. Clergy becomes more... Ah, I see. Okay. The state policy of religion, autocracy, and nationality has become the ubiquitous um, ideology of the Sokot people. There are a few who dare to question the absolute authority of the Caliph. So we go all hail the Caliph, which gives him popularity as well as uh, favors of the autocracy because the Sunni are around with us. Let's have a look. How popular is our guy already? He's not. He's 84. He's not going to last that long. He is loved. His heir is 84 as well. We're about to go through a lot of succession crises. The House of People are supreme. House of Pops become more loyalist and we get national assimilation for 19 years. Or the Sunni Lemma gives us 20% conversion. I think the House of People of Supreme is a good one to go for. Um, and getting that assimilation. Urbanized Dakota. Well, we can try. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Map the American Western Frontier. Has an interest in the Pacific Coast. Research Queen Iron. And we have a general and an admiral. Should we try? Should we try mapping the American Frontier? By the way, having a government administration with this many people, there's 100,000 people employed in the government administration, is easily the most amount of government administration in one place that I've ever had. Why are you guys in turmoil? I don't get it because of the sheer amount of radicals. I mean, it's literally one in every what four people is a radical. Why are we getting more radicals? Two bits of rubber rush. Oh god. So the Togo, or Togo, okay, well, Togo. Oh wait, we discovered rubber here. We don't know how to make rubber. <laughs> oh no. Right, let's build another construction center. You know how it goes. Cost us about three. And then we burn through our cash reserves of three hundred thousand. We've been doing quite well for an isolationist sort of market. You find now, British Chad. Malone, the bestie. What? Stop it! They're on incorporated state that goes against the rules of the game. Jesus, look like the amount of people he's got on his side. All right, what would make people happy? What's the dominant group? Oh, we have no legitimacy. Uh, that's because the Sunni Lemma left our. Why'd you leave? Well, that'll help, wouldn't it? Well, what do you want then? So, go on, tell me the laws you want. You want no colonial affairs. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Everyone that doesn't like me would like it. So let's do that. Fine. If you want me to censor you, I'll censor you. I don't. I, I don't get it. <laughs> hey, that's what we wanted. Right, now we can establish some colonies. Oh my god, severe malaria. People over here are starving. That's fine. We're about to bring you help in the form of my people settling your lands. That's 95% colony growth speed. Is that is that the literally the only place we can colonize? I can colonize Gabon as well. Okay, let's not. Yeah, we're not doing that. Hey, look how quick it is for them. Expert colonial administrator. Expert colonial administrator. Yeah, why can't you be an expert colonial administrator? Our economy has just gone stagnant. All right, you know what? First of all, why are you not incorporated? This tool, there's like 30 dudes working there. <laughs> I can force you guys to be my vassal, but I kind of have to go through France. Anyway, I think it is time for us to... Aww, they're too... They're... I was going to annex them, but the relations are too high, and it feels bad to just sort of kill them. Yeah, there's censorship for you. I have an idea. Uh, it's going to spoil all of the progress we've made so far, so I might do it in a year's time. But I'm going to establish an interest over here in Egypt and go through Darfur and see if maybe we could start messing with the Egyptians a little bit. I'm not going to become your protectorate. Fight me. I just enjoy the fact that just random in the desert, there's some dudes just making tools, importing some wood, getting the day's job done. It's pretty weird because we're a highly educated autocracy. Like, we're number 15th in the world for our literacy rate. That living is going up slightly as I keep on building more and more furniture. Oh, there we go. 12 days, 12 days. We claim this little bit of mountain for our own. Watch this. Now, let's remove that as an interest. Declare the Nile as our interest. And let's go ahead and conquer you. Go, my boys. Just like that, they've given in. Well, we'll take ourselves a monument. No, I don't want to... I don't want to make people more radicalized. Jeez. And now we've got this area. Kind of sucks. 
But that's okay, because he gives us access to Egypt. Never mind, the Egyptians have a much more modern army than we do. All right, let's start damaging relations over it. <laughs> we can join the scramble for Africa if we, like, any Sakot state is not incorporated state. So, our colonial empire in Africa is still in its infancy, but shows enough promise for us to be considered an important player in the region. That's amazing. All right, so there's two things I need to do. The first is I need to move over to agrarianism, which I've been trying this entire time. Uh, and that will piss off the landowners, but enable the rural folk that I've been suppressing this entire time. So, <laughs> whoops. The second thing is I need to shift from isolationism to a mercantilist uh, economy because this isolationism is nice for like self-subsistence and stuff, but it's kind of hurting because we can't join the global economy and use it, which is why our economy is rather like stagnant. It's slightly increasing, but we can't take advantage of everyone around us. Uh, I don't know what's going on over here. France versus the Ottoman Empire. France and Thrace and conquer Thessaly. The Egyptians are involved. We've got a defensive pact with Austria. <laughs> Number 12 in the world. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> It's so educated. Right, I'm starting to build more farms. Oh, God. So, great crop failure has brought a measure of suffering to our people who beg for government to take special measures in this matter. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? Chief, we don't have any, any imports or exports. It's a, it's a closed economy. Oh, I don't care about you. What's over here? Bro, you didn't, you didn't, you got turmoil anyway. You're starving either way. 13%. Right, Come on. Okay, that doesn't, that's not that bode well, is it? The donation of the US or Bornu or ourselves. Eh, internal donations. Bro, I'm, you wanted this. What do you mean? How? Okay, so how have you torpedoed agrarianism when you're the ones that wanted it, rural folk? You wanted agrarianism and you thought, nah, 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 nah. I don't want it anymore. The rural folk has been the most frustrating group I've ever had to deal with. Okay, we can't enact agrarianism. Ow, I just put my phone on my foot. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put through agrarianism. This time, I'm not going to stop until it's done. The issue being that this will decrease our bureaucracy to like minus 200. So let's prep for that by building more government administration. Probably defunding something. I like uh, foreign affairs. Like realistically, we're not getting anywhere without without malaria being not a thing. So, eh, sure. <laughs> Turn up. Okay, so we've got agrarianism done but our bureaucracy is ridiculously high so let's pull back on colonial affairs and let's start building some government administration buildings desperately quickly okay you guys want landed voting i'm gonna go ahead and do that because it pleases people and we need to start doing stuff that pleases people so then we can actually turn around and get rid of this stupid isolationism we've got going on i don't aren't actually in government i think that's fine and we'll just suppress them <sighs> can't afford that yeah we'll spend more money why not inefficient agriculture why not <laughs> Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> we are rapidly heading towards a debt spiral that I cannot get us out of. All right, let's uh, tax tobacco. Try and get our bureaucracy <laughs> kicking up and going again. Oh, God. It's the 10th most educated nation on Earth. <laughs> the only thing stopping our expansion is this. This defensive pact between the Egyptians and the Austrians. I'd have gone in after him otherwise. All right, 78%. What do you reckon? reckon we're gonna, gonna quickly grab that. Hopefully that'll create some loyalists in our country. Desperately need them. All right, wonderful. We've got landed voting. And it means that our construction is actually taken care of, is it? No, it, I lied completely. Just a bold faced lie. Uh, suddenly we're making money. <laughs> Popular or net? I'm just gonna ignore all that. Okay, we've got an election now. Because we've got elections now. Okay, that helped with the radicals. What else can I enact? That's the Liberal Party. The Conservative Party and the Radical Party. Don't like the look of that guillotine. Okay, we just need more grain. So if we need more grain, I'm just gonna build more grain. How do our farms actually work? Are they profitable? <laughs> our entire economy's regressed back. <laughs> oh, and trying to appease these idiots. I mean, with the, with the ninth most educated state on Earth, which is nice. <laughs> All right, so the Radical Party actually won the election. They got the most votes. What weird mix of people. I'm going to keep in the uh, coalition. I'm just going to keep it as it is, you know. The industrialists are loyal to me, and I can actually start implementing some laws. I've got a 4% chance. I'm just going to do it. We need access to the world economy. Ah, everywhere is in turmoil. Why is North Carolina... I don't understand how to get rid of this turmoil. <laughs> There's so many radicals everywhere. Not preserving isolationism. It's not happening. 4%. Do you believe in miracles, ladies and gentlemen? Do you believe in miracles? Because it's about to happen. How cool would that have been? 3.6%. It's even lower of a chance this time around, but watch it succeed. Oh, it's gone to 13.6. I'll, I'll take that. Now this time, a 14.1% chance. Immeasurably larger than the previous chance. So our economy's starting to increase uh, a little bit more. We're down to number 23, though. Ah, it's 24% now. 24.8%. This is it. This is how we turn everything around. Watch our economy tank immediately. Okay, look at the beans. So it should be 44% now. 
Right, I've rejigged our industry, so we're actually now producing luxury furniture as well for the rich Donnies amongst us, uh, because our clothing industry is basically caught up. It's just our, our furniture now. If we can get everyone furniture, our, our standard living is going to increase exponentially. But look at that GDP growth! Oh, man. Just can't wait to sell the world our luxury goods. It's going to be great. We can't afford, like, we can't, we don't have access to explosives. So I can't upgrade my, my, uh, production. Oh my god. We have access to the global market. We instantly start losing money. <laughs> Right, what do we export first? All right, we've got a lot of fabric and wood. All right, let's export some fabric. Should drive up the price of fabric a little bit. I don't really want to do it. I'm just going to crack down on radicals. 5% uh, chance, but it's worth giving that a shot for per capita cap taxation because it'll increase our income damn near exponentially. Radical party just destroyed in that election. Let's get them in. Everyone's involved apart from the army. <laughs> Look at that. We've got every interest group possible. And as you can see here, our economy since then has started to skyrocket. Now, if we could just get the per capita taxation going, we're going to start seeing some incredible progress in this nation. Unfortunately, we only have the one port. Let's build on that. Come on, 38% please do it. Actual banditry. All right, we're going to gamble and try and hunt down the bandit. It did not work. <laughs> we can't build tools in East Houseland anymore because there's no infrastructure. No, oh, Alpha Dan Fodio. That does not sound like a very Sokoto name, but he's wearing his turban and he is a slave up. <laughs> he's, a, he's just been born, but by God, is he... <laughs> Big on slavery. <laughs> Liberia wants a defensive pact. Absolutely. You're another African nation. Actually, we don't have enough iron. We need to build our own. Let's start working on our iron mines again. Come on, 37%. Let's do it. Let's do it. Give me the money. Give me the money. Give me the money. Oh, I'm never going to get this law passed. Dude, our authority is horrifying. Okay, let's change that. Okay, this province is completely animist and Protestant. So let's see if we could shift it around. All right, 27%. Oh my God, we actually did it. Look at the money. All right, so who's the biggest? Oh God, it's the rural folk. What do you want? What laws do you want? You want a national militia or a professional army instead of a peasant one? You want protectionism? The landowners, I'm not going isolationism again. I mean, you'd really, you'd, you'd really enjoy this, wouldn't you? And you're a majority of the population. So no colonial affairs. Saves me the bureaucracy, and I'm not really doing anything right now anyway, so we'll enact no, no colonial affairs. It was a failed experiment. This stupid 3,000 GDP added. Plus side, can I drop my I can drop my income taxation a little bit? In fact, I don't care. I'm just going to use this. We're going to pump up the construction sector quite a bit, and we're just going to sort of try and mass industrialize. All right, so we don't have colonial affairs anymore. I should hopefully reduce the amount of radicals in the country. Still in turmoil. Stop being in turmoil. What the hell is this? <laughs> France has just taken out parts of the Ottomans. Bankroll Great Britain. We transfer 146,000 a week. If I keep the industrious out, we'll have to add in the petit bourgeoisie and the trade unions because they want to join the radical party. You need to enact wage subsidies. What the hell is a wage subsidy? Welfare payments? Why would I do that? Poor laws. Don't be poor. Be rich. And I tell you what, with our GDP shooting up, the rankings are about to beat Canada. We're about to go up another place. I'm trying to do Canada, huh? Do a GDP per capita. It's not about GDP per capita. It's about GDP. We're about to catch you. We have a higher GDP than the Ottomans. That's ridiculous. It's time to actually have a decent army. Okay, on second thoughts, let's uh, everyone go to line infantry because I can't I, I can't afford ammunition. Okay, we know we need our only port working over time. Number 16, we overtook the uh, the Canadians. And now our diplomatic packs don't mean anything. So it might be worth just conquering these boys their populations. I think that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's go over here. Damage relations with all our vassal states that have so faithfully served us over the years. Expel some of their diplomats. I'm going to use each of them to take out another one. I feel like there should be a peaceful annexation option. <laughs> we don't have any small arms or artillery. So let's uh, we need to get that industry up and running. All right. Hello, Dahomey. Thank you for everything that you've done, but your service is no longer necessary. You might actually take out Oyo in the time. It should be quite funny. Okay, the Egyptians have turned up. Did not anticipate having to fight the Egyptians in this. Uh, a little bit uh, upsetting. Let's get this Donny. We're going to promote him twice. Mobilize him. And if you could defend against the Egyptians, that'd be wonderful. Okay, the Egyptians are actually... Oh, they're over here. My boy Oyo is dead. <laughs> they killed him. Oh, there's no general here. There's no, there's no worries, is there? So let's just... 94, he should go down to minus 100 now, and that should be the instant piece. There you go. We've annexed the homie, or as I know him, a good friend of mine. <laughs> Such a stupid joke. Gonna push the front until he arrives, and now we defend. Push into Egyptian land a little bit, nice. Their troops are inevitably gonna be better than ours, uh, especially if our guys are the ones, like our vassal states are the ones in the battle. Oyo, I really don't need you in this battle, chief. In fact, if you could not be here, that would be wonderful. That, what? That man has a sword and he's beating cannons! <laughs> 
<laughs> How has he achieved this? And at 20% army offense, how have you done that? That is remarkable. Once again, these guys don't have any, like, any sort of stats. We have an average of 24 offense defense, and they have one. Okay, Oyo, stop being involved in the battles, please. Your troops are that bad. I just need you to not be here, bud, okay? Oyo, I need you to go, please. <laughs> Why is it always his troops? <laughs> hey, let it be my troops, please, please, please. Yeah, my troops are fine. <laughs> my troops are way better than his. Oh, for God's sake, Oyo, just leave. Leave the front, buddy. Don't be Oyo. Don't be Oyo. Don't do this to me, game. Don't do this. Oh, for God's sake. All right, we can just get a white piece, apparently. Okay, good. Well, we can fight the Egyptians. We know that now. There's one challenge that I want to see if I can complete. There's one thing that... I mean, I did fight the English a couple of times, you know, to a stalemate. But that's not exactly taking land. So today, we are going to see we we'll fight the Dutch. Because this little bit of land here... Got GDP of 2.35 million. My fear... Is the Oyo decides to get involved. All right, I've added my my claims. Has he really got no one here? I have an idea then. All right, we're fighting at a European power, and we've instantly forced them out. <laughs> it was a lot less climactic than I thought it would be. All right, in the meantime, I've, I've also built a navy. So we're going to recruit ourselves an admiral. We're going to naval invade with Tukur Sakari. Oh, oh, the Dutch, they're here. They've naval invaded. Oh, no. Oh, God, how do I cancel a naval invasion? Uh... Uh, patrol coast, patrol coast, patrol coast. We need our, we need our main boys advancing this front. Uh, in fact, do the naval invasion with the other guys. It's a gamble, but let's see how if it pays off. Right, he's in behind me, but I think I've come off from the coast, and there's that naval invasion dealt with. I was a lot less panicked than I perhaps should have been. All right, let's see if this lot can establish a beachhead in the Dutch Ivory Coast. We're not at war with the Netherlands. Naval invasion. Do they have a revolt? What's going on? What did you do? Why can't I invade this area? Well, apparently I'm going to try and invade the <laughs> the Dutch directly, which I can't imagine is going to work, considering we have two ships. We've got two men in a rubber dinghy, and we're calling that our navy. Fighting off any interception in the navy will be up there. I'll do it. Instantly lost. Dutch Ghana is controlled by Sokoto. But it's not, though. I don't I don't get what... What are we at war with? Did you, like, secede it? What is going on? i bump up my... Uh domestic arms industry right now. I can kick out the Ulema, who are now the Liberal Party, and that'll increase my legitimacy. So let's do that. But what resource am I lacking? We have, like, no artillery. Just none. Start making some cannons as well. God knows we need them. I'm actually going to win this war. It's very surprising. There we go. We conquered. <laughs> we conquered the land, boys. It's ours. It's all ours. Our GDP jumps up to number 16, and I think that's where we'll live with today. I think that we did pretty well. I would say that counts. We've shown that we're able to handle uh, African powers like Egypt and bully them into giving us what we, what we wanted. We dominate the states around here. We can come and annex them. And we just kicked out the Dutch from Africa. I, I really think that is that is something uh, something good. Could we take on the French right now? Probably not. Could we do it in future? I, I genuinely back us. Our GDP obviously is nowhere near theirs. But us having the domestic advantage, you saw how easy it was to sort of push them out. I reckon we could do something there. So maybe I continue this game. Who knows? So lads, if you have any ideas of uh, sort of what you want to see. Oh god, that Mexican border. Of anything you want to see in uh, in Victoria 3, please do let me know in the comments down below. And I'll sure to get around of it. I'm really enjoying this game. Uh, it's something a little bit different. And hopefully you guys are too. So yeah, I look forward to reading your comments. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Huge shout out to our patrons, most notably Charlie Demorel, Krilly, Flyerton, JDow52, Cargon, Xiaomi, Lewis Wright, Nicole's Christ, QA Shard, Redguard, and Shadow Singer. Your support means a lot, guys. Whilst you're here, you might as well click on another video. I mean, it's it's literally right there.